What? You want a funny cold open for every video? Well, you should have listened to the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. I am rec recording another video at night. I thought I'd give it another try since the first one turned out pretty well. And this is also kind of a last-minute video. That's one reason why I'm recording it at night. And also another reason uh, it does not have a funny cold open. I couldn't think of one. And b besides, if I have a video every once in a while that doesn't have a funny cold open, that makes them a little bit more special, right? That, that's, that's my excuse. But anyway, yes, uh, as I said, this is kind of a last-minute video. And I hesitated to do this video, to be quite honest, uh, for, for two main reasons. First of all, uh, two, you know, two things I am very acutely aware of. First of all, that many of my viewers and sub subscribers probably do not have a whole lot of money to spend on music. I mean, I don't either. I'm not, I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination. I would spend three times, four times as much on records and CDs if I could. Uh, but also, uh, because perhaps no other part of the United States is as spoiled for record stores as the Pacific North Northwest. Uh, and that's one of the big reasons why I feel so fortunate to live here, is that, uh, you know, record stores are just not that far away from me, uh, pretty much no matter where you are in the western half of the state. You know, we, we've, got it good, we've got it good for record stores here, and I'm aware that a lot of other people uh, in a lot of other parts of the country are not that lucky. So, uh, I, so I, I didn't want to seem with this video like I was bragging or gloating or showing off the stuff I'm about to show you. But it's because I'm very much aware of the two, those two things that I felt so excited and so fortunate to have happened upon this, this bounty here that I just had to let it out in this video. And, and besides, I think the Music Junkie community is one of those groups that gets a, a secret little thrill out of the, the benevolent envy of other people's acquisitions, you know? So... What would you call that? Uh, record porn, I guess. You know, there's food porn. You know, you look at food you can't eat or or aren't able to eat or whatever. But anyway, uh, so anyway, you could argue that uh, this is one of the reasons for YouTube's very existence, right? Well, at least I could argue. So. But anyway, I'm kind of getting off topic. So back onto the subject at hand here. I've mentioned Skips Records and CD World several times on this channel. It's where I get my mystery CD grab bags every month for my bargain bag feature. And it also actually plays a significant role in some videos that I will be uploading probably next week. Uh, but I rarely talk about the other store that I visit called House of Records. Now what's great about House of Records, uh, although not so great uh, for the people who take their used records and CDs there to sell, is that it's a small store. It's much smaller than Skips. And uh, th so they don't have a lot of space to put product, and so they're picky about what they buy from sellers. And sometimes when the seller doesn't feel like lugging the stuff that House of Records doesn't want to another store, the seller decides to just leave it behind on a shelf by the door where it's up for grabs. Yeah, for free. So it seems to happen kind of inconsistently, though. Uh, weeks and weeks can go by with almost nothing showing up on that shelf. And then all of a sudden, several waves of stuff can come and go one after the other. Uh, records do show up there more often than CDs, but there have been a lot of both lately, and, well, I took advantage. So uh, I've had particularly good luck with that freebies shelf lately, so I thought I'd show you some of the goodies that I got. So you can kind of understand why, since these were all free for the taking, why I was kind of hesitant to do this video. I don't want to make it, as I said, sound like I was bragging or something. But, uh, yeah, I, I just was so excited I couldn't not show these to you. First of all, I got uh, the records. I got a little stack of records here and I don't know I might think more of these than you guys do but hey I couldn't not show them first of all uh, Frank Yankovic polka variety um, I've actually got a compilation CD of Frank Yankovic stuff but this is the first record I've got and of course me being a Weird Al Yankovic fan I, I had to have more than one accordion playing Yankovic in my collection uh, and for the record, uh, contrary to popular belief, Frank Yankovic and Weird Al Yankovic are not related. Yes, they both play the accordion, their last names are both Yankovic, but they are not related. So look it up, I'm telling you the truth. And anyway, then I got some jazz, uh, Bob James and David Sanborn. Uh, two artists that I kind of like. I've got a couple of uh, CDs of each of theirs, uh, 
separately, you know, solo. So we yeah, had to pick that one up. And I've got a couple of Al Jarreau albums here. Uh, so uh, R&B and Soul Singer. This, I guess, is self-titled. Yeah, self-titled. And then this time, another one here. And then I've got some George Benson. Yeah, you just saw me review George Benson CD. Uh, 2020 is this album. Then we got some 38 Special. Yeah, Wild-Eyed Southern Boys. This is Southern rock, although later on they transitioned into more mainstream pop rock sort of stuff. Uh, they're good. They've had a couple big hits. And we got uh, from the 80s, Pat Benatar. And uh, Steve Perry Street Talk. This was kind of cool because, well, cool although ill-timed because uh, the week before, honestly, I, f I picked this up for $4.50. So I paid four fifty for it. And then the next week I found it for free in the freebies pile. And these, all of these records, well, almost all of them, seem to be in pretty good condition. Uh, they, I haven't played any of them yet, so, uh, but we'll see. But, although this one, actually, now that I say that, this one is the exception, Roberta Flack. Uh, her, this was her uh, debut album, first time. And this one has a rather deep cut um, scratch in one of the sides, so it's most likely going to skip all to hell. But, uh, I mean, honestly, as I said, for, for nothing... I couldn't not pick it up. And then uh, some more jazz. Spirogyra is a jazz, contemporary jazz, fusion jazz group. This is their self-titled album, so I was assume it's their first. And then a couple of Sheena Easton, uh, another 80s artist. Uh, we got A Private Heaven and self-titled, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Strut is one of her big hits. It was on uh, this album. And uh, Morning Train, 9 to 5. That was probably her biggest hit, so, yeah. Couldn't not pick up Sheena Easton, being an 80s kid, you know, so. And then I got some CDs as well. And these are actually not all the CDs I picked, I found. Uh, these are just the ones that are mildly interesting enough to show you. Uh, but, yeah, I got, I got, like I said, I got quite a, quite a little haul there. Uh, first one is Classical Guess. I actually already have this on CD, but I had to pick it up. I... I don't know if I have any friends who would appreciate this kind of stuff, but uh, I'm going to give this to somebody who I think would appreciate it. If you've never heard the composition Classical Gas before, uh, and you probably have at some point somewhere heard parts of it anyway, uh, give it a listen. It's just cool uh, jazz, maybe easy, easy listening, straddling the line between jazz and easy listening. But yeah, this has uh, re-recordings of a lot of his classic stuff with the New Age, I think they're classified as a New Age band, Mannheim Steamroller. So, uh, yeah, had to pick that up because I know how good it is. And then a couple of CDs by James Galway, a flute player um, from Ireland, I think. So, yeah, The Wind Beneath My Wings and Wind of Change. I didn't realize until now that they both had wind in the title. But, uh, yeah, just some pop and, ro and radio hits from the past several decades, uh, his versions of those. And then uh, speaking of Mannheim Steamroller, as I did a minute ago, got this nice little thing, a two-disc uh, 25th anniversary celebration in a nice little slip case here. And yeah, so that was pretty, I mean, for free, honestly, really. And then uh, the Christmas album by Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Yeah. Love me some TJB. JTB! I said TJB. Tijuana Brass? Jeez. Anyway, uh, then I got the Greatest Hits album by Israel Kamakawiwole, a Hawaiian uh, artist. The, the late Hawaiian artist. He passed away many years ago. Uh, the ukulele rendition of Over the Rainbow that you've probably heard somewhere, he's responsible for that. So yeah, had to pick up a Greatest Hits album by that guy. And then I've been curious about these guys for a while. Il Divo, the um, classical pop or popera crossover act uh, from... Well, they're still recording, actually. So, yeah. Had to give them a try. I mean, for free, why not? You know? And then a um, obscure uh, compilation by Barbara Streisand. So I figured it's got a couple of new songs on it. Don't know if I'll keep that one or give it away. I don't know. And then uh, Gloria Estefan's uh, album, Cuts Both Ways. Had to have that. I'm, I'm a big Gloria Estefan fan. And then there was some, some country in here. I figured, you know... Might as well give them a try. I got a Carrie Underwood, 
a Blake Shelton. This this one actually was not too bad. Kind of liked it. And a couple of Lady Antebellum. They were all right. And a couple of Kenny Chesney. Two Kenny Chesney CDs here. And then this one. I would not pay money for this CD, so that's the only reason I actually possess it, which uh, is not for very long because I didn't care for it much. Chris Brown. Yeah, he's... Uh, yeah, the kind of a person he is, I would not pay money for any of his CDs. And yeah, I, I had to pick it up just because I was curious about the first track, turned out the music, since I like songs about music. But I uh, yeah. didn't think much of it, honestly. And then Milo Green is a band that I don't know much about. Uh, I looked them up a while ago and listened to a couple of their songs, and I I thought they were okay, but, so, but I never picked up an album or listened to a full album, so thought this was my chance, so I picked it up. And then uh, the Robert Cray Band. Uh, they're a blues blues R&B uh, mix band. Uh, I've got a few of their CDs, my, uh, one or two of more in my sister's collection, and that compelled me to pick up one or two more. And so this is actually the fifth uh, CD of theirs that I got. And then a... Uh, look, I think this is a promo. I'm not sure if it was actually a retail... CD or not, but yeah, just a sampler from that uh, 20th Century Millennium Collection thing. So yeah, it's got uh, Leonard Skinnerd, Etta James, Mamas and the Papas, Joe Cocker, Buddy Holly, Marvin Gaye, yeah. Rod Stewart. So, yeah. Even though I probably have nearly every one of those songs already in my collection. But, hey, I'm a compulsive CD picker-upper, I guess. And then this was the acquisition that I was probably most happy, most eager to get. Uh, it is Howie Day. He is a singer-songwriter from the 2000s, I think. Yeah. I actually got two of his CDs, uh, Stop All the World Now, and this is actually the special edition with a couple extra tracks on it, and his follow-up album, Sound the Alarm. So, And this is one of those artists that I, I checked out years and years ago. Didn't quite stick for some reason, so I decided to, you know, this was my opportunity to give him another try. So, And I have listened to Stop All the World Now since I picked it up again, and I think it might actually stick this time. I, I was very uh, pleased with this album. have not listened to Sound the Alarm yet, but uh, that's pretty much next on my list. So yeah, that was I was very happy to get those. Uh, but then one of the biggest coups, uh, depending on your perspective, because it's not a perfect uh, specimen of it, but still, uh, John Coltrane. And this is actually a... I mean, this, this is kind of a cool package, packaging a metal band that wraps around a book, a uh, book-bound uh, thing. This is actually, it's an 8-CD set, but two of the discs were missing, so that's the main reason it was sitting there on the freebie shelf, is because, you know, who's going to want to buy, what store is going to want to buy a CD, 8-CD set with two discs missing, so yeah, I've always wanted to really give Coltrane a try, and now's my chance, so that was just you can understand now how eager and happy I was that I found all this stuff. And I may actually be putting some of it up, uh, announcing at a later date maybe. Uh, if anybody's interested in any of these things that I'm not going to keep for myself, you see anything on here? Uh, same as with my bargain bag videos, drop me a line and ask me if I'm going to keep it or going to give it up. I can mail it to you, no questions asked. I won't even ask you for postage. So, uh, yeah, we can work. Uh, let me know either in the comments down here in, in the video or in a direct message on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, I hope you had fun looking at this little bounty of goodies that I was able to get my paws on. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, as I said, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.